as Deacon Dan said, <clears throat> we have these special readings because we're joined today by our OCIA um, candidates and canacumens who are sitting right over in this section. Hello. And um, they are set to receive sacraments at the Easter Vigil, either baptism or First Communion or a confirmation. So it's great to have them here. And the readings change because uh, there's now a strong theme of baptism through the readings for those who are obviously preparing for that. And I'd like to begin uh, this morning by using a story that I stole from a guy named Jeff Cavins. So I want to give him credit. His name is Jeff Cavins. He did something called The Great Adventure Bible Timeline. And one of the things he talks about is that uh, a movie came out some years ago called Titanic. I don't know if any of you saw it. It was massively huge. I think it was one of the first movies to make over a billion dollars. It was, it was a phenomenon. And people loved this movie, and uh, particularly young women loved this movie. So, like, adolescent girls loved this movie. So they did a study to find out why did young women love this movie. And the study revealed that young women love boats. <laughs> yeah, and the Titanic's about a boat. It sinks, sad, but a boat, nonetheless. That's not true. Um, they, they love the movie because they love love. And it's a story about love. And human beings love love, and young women are human beings, and they love love. And Leo DiCaprio, which also helps. <laughs> and so the point is, is that our faith is meant to be a, a love relationship with the living God. And if we don't experience that or think that, then we're probably doing it wrong in some way. And we have this marvelous story of Jesus and this woman at the well, and she comes to faith in Jesus, and Jesus appeals to her seeking heart. Jesus wants to give her something, but he begins by asking her for something. He says, give me a drink of water, and he's appealing to her seeking heart. And the catechism of the Catholic Church begins not with God's search for man, but for man's search for God, that you and I have a seeking, desiring, yearning heart. As you too once famously said, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. I think it's the Rolling Stones said, I can't get no <laughs> satisfaction, right? I can't, I'm looking, I'm yearning, I'm desiring, I'm seeking. And the thing is, is that we have an infinite desire for truth, for beauty, for goodness, and for the center. In other words, like, what's the thing that holds my whole life together? Like, what is life about? Where do I find truth and goodness and beauty? And for many of us, what we do, and this is like so many rock songs and pop songs, is we take this infinite desire for truth, beauty, and goodness, and we attach it to finite things, which is a bad combination. And Thomas Aquinas says that if we don't worship the living God, we we'll usually worship one of four things, which is power, money, pleasure, or honor. And we just tell ourselves, the next thing, the next promotion, the next girlfriend, the next boyfriend, the next hundred thousand, the next million, the another accomplishment, the next award, the next, that thing will satisfy my heart. That'll do it. And it does. For a day. Or a week. And then it starts all back up again. And there's a question of, can we ever stop doing this? Is this, are we just... Uh, resigned to this, you know? There's an old saying, he who wins the rat race is still a rat. <laughs> so can I, can I get out of the race? Can I, can I stop, you know? And this can lead, when we have this infinite desire for truth, beauty, and goodness, and we attach it to finite things, it leads to addiction. And you and I are sinners, and we know addiction. And we all have different drugs, but we can all be tend towards that thing. And I remember being on this uh, plane, and I watched a movie called Amy. It was about a woman named Amy Winehouse, who was a, uh, a jazz musician. And she died from, from a drug overdose. And at one point in the movie, she's in rehab, and she comes out to receive an award. And her idol growing up was Tony Bennett, who's a famous jazz musician. And she wins, it was either a, uh, Artist of the Year or Record of the Year. Like a massive award. It's like the apex of her career. And she, and Tony Bennett's the person who announced the award. So she wins the award. She comes up, she takes the award from him. Everyone's cheering and clapping. She walks off the stage and says to her friend, life is so boring without drugs. 
And see, that's what happens to us, is that we think we take this infinite desire and we attach it to a finite thing and we think we're consuming it and it very quickly it starts to consume us. And is there a way out of this? And Jesus, uh, this desire, I should say, but this desire is not bad. So that's the Buddhist, um, that's their solution. Buddhism says uh, all of suffering is caused from desire. So what we need to do is just eliminate desire. And if we can eliminate desire, we can eliminate suffering. The Christian response is, no, the desire itself is not bad. The desire was given to you by God, but here's the thing, it was given to you for God. The desire is not bad. There is someone or something that can satisfy it. Nothing on this earth will ultimately satisfy it, but eternal life will satisfy it. And then through the things of this earth, you can be pointed towards the things of eternity. And so that's what Jesus does with this woman at the well. He recognizes in her heart this seeking, desiring, yearning. And uh, they kind of miss each other for a while because she thinks he wants just physical water, but he's talking about spiritual water. So she's sort of taunting him like, sir, the well is deep and you don't even have a bucket. So she's just like not sort of getting what he's saying. And then finally, Jesus says to her, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The thing you've been looking for your whole life that none of those other things could satisfy, I can. I offer you a living water. And you'll never thirst again. This is what you've been looking for your whole life. And she says, sir, give me this water always that I may not be thirsty or have to come keeping here to draw the water. And then Jesus says, this really strange response, he says, go get your husband. <laughs> now, this woman is a Samaritan. And, well, before that, uh, there's a theme throughout this whole reading of marriage. And there's a nuptial theme. The story begins at a well. And if you're Jewish, and you, you, there's a story that has a well, that reminds you of weddings. Because three of the patriarchs met their spouse through a well. So Jews, when they go wells, they, think, they hear like wedding bells, like something's going to happen. So Jesus is at this well, and a woman approaches him. In the Jewish mind, it's like, oh, that, that makes sense. And then Jesus says, go get your husband, and she's a Samaritan, and they've been cut off from the Jewish people, and they've intermarried with five other foreign nations, and they've stopped worshiping the living and true God. And so when Jesus says, you've had five husbands, and the one you currently have is not your husband, so he's had five, then the one you currently have six is not. And he's presenting himself as like the seventh husband. In other words, I'm what you've been looking for in all of those relationships. And you need to return to me. I'm the one who's been pursuing you. I'm what your heart has been looking for. Friends, the Lord is pursuing you. The catechism says at every time and at every place, God draws close to man. Everything that will happen to you today, everything that happened to you yesterday, everything that will happen to you tomorrow, the Lord is pursuing you. He desires you. And he says to this woman, give me a drink. There's only one other time in John's gospel where he'll say that he's thirsty. And he'll say it from the cross. He'll say, I thirst. But what is he thirsting for? Love. Whose? Yours your love. He wants to be loved back, and he's pursuing you. The question is, are you responding? Am I responding? Is Jesus the thing that we really look for more than anything? Is he the center of our life? Is he the thing that puts it all together? And here's a really easy way uh, to answer the question, do you desire God? Do I desire God? Imagine that every day in your bank account, somebody deposited $86,400. And you could spend that $86,400 however you wanted, and by the end of the day, the money disappeared, and then the next day it started back up, you got $86,400. That would be pretty fantastic, right? Well, at the end of a month, if I just looked at your receipts, I could see a lot of what you value by how you spent that money, yeah? And every 24-hour day, you have 86,400 seconds. And it resets every day. And how you spend that 86,400 seconds, how I spend my 86,400 seconds, reveals what I value. 
what I desire, what I pursue? Is it Jesus? Am I really seeking him? Or am I seeking something else? Because if I'm seeking something else, I might be in this terrible loop of this infinite desire attached to a finite thing. And it's enough for a moment. It's like salt water. But then the salt option makes me thirstier in the long run. Am I in that terrible loop? And Jesus says, I'm what you're, you're searching for. I'm what you're actually seeking. And the way to return to the Lord is um, not to be rebaptized if you've already been baptized, but to make a good confession. That's the way I renew the covenant. To say, Lord, I have sought other things that are not you, things that cannot satisfy me, but I want to return to you. Because if my faith is not about a love relationship, then I'm doing it wrong because you're pursuing me and I want to respond in faith. As the Bible says, why well, spend your money for what fails to satisfy? And so friends, Jesus is pursuing your heart. He's pursuing my heart. And blessed are those who allow themselves to be caught by his love.